Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 18th and check out the curly Q here, the cinnamon bun across British Columbia. Definitely dropping down our temperatures here over the next few days across some of the region, keeping some onshore flow ongoing here. We're going to bring back, you know, some of those very lofty temperatures we've been dealing with. You know, we dropped down a little bit yesterday, but still quite a warm day across Seattle, Portland, and places like Spokane. And we've got some fire weather coming up here also. And I'm going to take a look at that in some detail. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as we go through the video this morning, as always. And starting things off here right now. So check this out as the sun rises. I'm going to toggle back and forth. What do you see coming into the Puget Sound through the Chehalis Gap there across the Kitsap Peninsula and towards Seattle? As we speak right now, you see that marine there still pushing in this morning and maybe just starting to burn back for some areas. But you can see pretty well entrenched here across the I-5 corridor between Olympia and down towards you know, Kelsey. Also Toledo and whatnot. And the Washington, Oregon coast is pretty well socked in. You can see that marine there pushed way into some of the valley areas as well. But you get some get some decent sunshine there across places like Portland, Salem, all the way down towards Eugene. But there uh, is some fire smoke out there. We're going to take a look at that here in a moment as well. And in fact, starting right now, I'm going to pause this and we're going to scroll out here. And this is a fire there just to the south of I-5 starting to produce some smoke. You can see some smoke from the Southern California fires making their way back up across the Klamath Falls here and across portions of eastern Oregon as well. So that's where a lot of that smoke is coming from as we speak. So taking a look here, there's the Bear Gulch fire. You may have seen some of this if you're across from the Puget Sound. You look, you have a view of the Olympic Mountains. You can probably see some of that. I can see it the last couple of nights there. Again, the Bear Gulch fire continues to burn. If I click on that, you can see, what is it? Uh, does it have any kind of acreage? 327 acres, not too big, but you definitely can see the smoke out there. And if we look a bit further south, the board shanty fire is what this one is you can see what 339 acres just south of i5 but it is producing smoke as you saw on the visible satellite imagery currently so Taking a look here, look at where we were two weeks ago as far as the drought monitor is concerned. You can see we had some extreme drought across western Montana in towards Idaho and just clipping the Washington border there. We had severe drought, including some of the east slopes of the Cascades of Washington, down just clipping Seattle there, down towards Portland and some of northwest Oregon. And when you see the moderate drought is there, a little bit lighter color there and the, the brighter yellow there as abnormally dry conditions. So if we put that across the region here, look at how that grew across some of the Idaho Panhandle and creeped into Washington and even Northeast Oregon a bit more there. And we put some of that severe drought across Northeast Oregon. We expanded severe drought across portions of North Central Washington and even towards Snohomish, King, Pierce County there down towards the I-5 corridor and expanded it down into the Willamette Valley there. So yes, severe drought starting to take hold a bit more here across Washington, Oregon. And again, that extreme drought starting to make its way into Washington, Oregon as well. We have been fairly dry and above normal here for the last couple of months. So taking a look here, the seasonal three-month drought outlook for July 17th through October 31st. Uh, this does not bode well for fire season here. Look at this develop in the yellow and drought persisting is in the brown. So we are supposed to develop drought here across much of Washington, Oregon, and all of Idaho here over the next, and all of Washington for that matter, here over the next month or two. So this is also looking at fire weather. You can see the, the yellow is some low risk. There's some moderate risk out here in the browns as well, but you can kind of see how the west gets a little bit highlighted here as we go through the summer months, significant fire potential. Now, looking at Seattle yesterday, 86 degrees, 94 the previous day, the Seattle, Tacoma. We don't have any precipitation to speak of here so far for the month of July, at least not measurable. We did get a trace on July 9th there, and we are 3.4 degrees above normal for the month of July. Portland checking in at 87 there, another toasty day, 97 prior though, so we did get a nice drop off, and again, 3.2 degrees above normal so far for the month of July. 4.3 degrees above normal for Spokane, Washington, 88 there yesterday, the warm day of the last three for Spokane and no measurable precip yet this month. And if you guys want your own affordable home weather station, this one is the best you can buy for the money. It's got a lightning detection system with it. It does ambient light, UV index, solar radiation. It's very fun. Stores all the data for you in the cloud. Great smartphone app. You will not regret it. Helps support the channel. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. So Eastern Washington and Oregon, we got hot, dry, and windy through Friday. Watch out for the fire danger. We got red flag warnings all over 
over the place gusts to 40 miles per hour will bring enhanced fire weather conditions through many parts of the region so watch out if you see any fire start they may rapidly grow and you can see the red flag warning includes Chelan, Wilbur, Moses Lake, Ritzville, Spokane, Pullman, Pasco, Walla Walla and just off to the west of Lewiston and does include Yakima as well so be careful out there folks these fires can spread really quickly now, if we take a look at what is going on here on the hurt. Now, there's that board shanty fire down here producing some smoke that's drifting around. That's the Cram fire and then the British Columbia fire up there as well. And again, we're not doing too bad though so far right now, but that's precluding any new fire starts that may happen. And you can see it even shows that Bear Gulch fire there across the Olympic Mountains still producing some smoke as we go through the day today. So if you do get a view of the Olympic Mountains and you see the hazy skies or the dark skies and on the southern portion of the Olympic Mountains. You see that bit of smoke rising. That is that Bear Gulch fire. So let's back this up here. This is the European last night's run. We're looking at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. It does a great job of telling you where the ridges and the troughs are. And if we scroll through here, you'll notice we're kind of in the influence of this trough. It's going to be cooling us down for a few days. The ridge really gets amplified out across the Gulf of Alaska, way north of the Hawaiian Islands. Troughing, keeping the onshore flow going. High to low, the weather likes to flow. And you can see that kind of staying with us as we go through the early portion of next week with this upper level low and this way might even kick off a little bit of precipitation here across the region fingers crossed we are in our dry season here folks and it is really hard to do so but who knows maybe we'll get lucky with that and you can see the ridge stay established as we go all the way on in towards next week let's see what is to come after that you see that Notice that ridge get pushed off to the west a little bit and this next trough coming. We'll check that out in the extended forecast. But I'm going to play this through. This is about 2,500 feet off the surface. And you can see the gears in the machine, the Pacific Ocean high pressure system. They're just dominating uh, the weather out there and allowing for this cooler north-northwest flow, onshore flow as we go on in through next week. So no big heat dome set up across the Pacific Northwest, which can really be a very warm time of year. If you do get a ridge set up over top of us now, you can really punch up. Up into some 90s and even towards 100 for Seattle if you really set up the ridge but we are not looking at that right now if I put that into motion notice that this tropical wave moving towards the Hawaiian Islands are kind of interesting look at things there across the intertropical convergent zone I have to keep an eye on that for any travelers going out to Hawaii during the summer months but I don't know why it would because the weather is so glorious here across the Pacific Northwest at this time of year now is not the time to be going to the tropics Save that for the winter. So taking a look here at the European model. So again, you can see we got this system kind of moving through. It's bringing some precipitation, mainly Rocky Mountains, interior portions of BC. Might kick off a stray shower across northern Washington. We go on in through Saturday, Sunday, and then we go towards Monday. And this is where the precipitation maybe starts to kick off a little bit across western Washington, western Oregon, depending on the track of this next upper level low as we go on in through the day Monday. Look at that. That's not a bad precipitation maker there. So we'll watch that one. Maybe we'll get a couple thunderstorms out of this as well as we go on into Monday afternoon. Then we go to Tuesday. That system continues to kick off but could still be producing some showers across the Cascades. We'll watch that system closely. We're still a few days out from it, but we're, we'll be watching it here on a daily basis here, folks. And if we take a look at the National Blend of Models, daily 2-meter max temperature. This is for today, Friday, July 18th. Look at Seattle, 77. Portland, warmer. Willamette Valley, you know, still approaching 90. And you're getting some upper 90s east of the mountains as well. Look at that Boise approaching 99 degrees. We go through Saturday. We bring the temperatures down a bit more. Look at Seattle, nice, comfortable 75. We go to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We start to warm things back up next week. We'll see how that goes. But, you know, Wednesday showing 84 for Seattle. So 90s returning to eastern Washington as well. As we get towards peak season here, July 29th is really peak summertime here for the Pacific Northwest. Now, uh, this is the European Ensemble mean. So I want to put this into motion. You can see the troughing and kind of still influence, going to be influencing our weather for the next few days. You can see it kind of hanging out there. And that's the system on Monday. So we'll watch that one to see if we can get some thunderstorm activity or some precipitation west of the mountains. You see the ridge amplified here across the Gulf of Alaska. And if we put that into motion, you can kind of see the influence of the trough still with us as we go through next weekend. Also, then that system starts to weaken. And you see the ridge start to ever slow slightly here, start to creep back to the west they're starting to get established across maybe some of the southwest usa or central portions we'll see how far that ridge starts to 
move back towards the Pacific Northwest, it is that time of year where we can definitely start to warm up. So you really got to watch these ridge and trough positions at this time of year. And here's the 15 day precipitation outlook. Not as much, not much has changed over the last few days. You can see Seattle below, Southwest BC, Vancouver Island, some of Western Oregon below. GFS paints a similar picture with above normal precipitation across some of the interior BC, Rocky Mountains through Alberta. So if we look at the Climate Prediction Center, they've got that below normal signal here. Okay, not too big of a deal, but this, I don't know about this. Did you see any sign of that? I didn't, so we'll continue to monitor that. But yeah, there's the Climate Prediction Center, 8 to 14 day, kind of a mixed bag. And again, kind of uh, there's some near normal here across the region. Um, monthly temperature outlook did come out as well. So August 2025, you can see this was issued yesterday, above normal signal here for the Pacific Northwest and the below normal precipitation signal there. So hot and dry, not a good combination as far as fire season is concerned. Here is the seasonal temperature outlook, August, September, and October of 2025, the above normal, really for the entire lower 48 states and almost all of Alaska here as well. So interesting look and the below normal signal here does creep in towards Idaho and Western Montana, but we won't worry about that too much. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.